meditate on God's word. There are many things to get from it. Once the devil knows that you receive a word and you are not holding on to it, he takes it from you. The word is just the product. It is meditation and holding on to that word that will produce the byproduct. The word is just a product. Meditating, holding on to it, you get the byproduct. The fulfillment of prophecies, the fulfillment of the promise. So at first, when you look at your life, the promise or the prophecy does not look as if you will get there. Or even everything God wrote consigning you does not look. When you are reading the Bible, you say, all these many, many blessings we are seeing here. I have not seen them in my life. It is meditation holding on to it. Because your heart is the refinery. Your, that's where you meditate it to life. In fact, listen, meditation is giving life to the written word. The Bible says, the letter kill it. It is the spirit that giveth life. So when you are meditating, you are giving life to the written word. Your heart is a refinery. My heart is a what? I'm not hearing you. Your heart is a what? In Proverbs 17 from verse 2, God said the, the refining pot, 3 from verse 3, the refining pot is for silver. The refining pot for silver. The furnace for good. But God tests the heart of man because the heart of man is a refinery. That's where you refine things. Meaning, if I ate one person, if I just have eight in my heart for this man, I am refining eight. And you know the byproduct? Thousands of people will hate me. Uh, now we are, we, are, we are leaving the government. Now let's talk about you. <laughs> now you are, why do people hate me? Why? Yeah, just one eight for one person. You are refining it. You don't know. Meditating it. Then you see thousands of people don't like you for no reason. It's the byproduct. It is it's you that have the product. <laughs> yeah, 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 now you're hearing me. It's you that have the product. If you want people to love you, just love people. If love is in your heart, it will refine and thousands of people will just love you for no reason. <laughs> you, you, you are not hearing me. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you don't have one second. Tell your neighbor, you don't have one second. <laughs> to keep hate in your heart. You are not permitted <laughs> to even hate <laughs> one person. Now you must know that hate is a product just as love is a product. And the one you have in your life is the byproduct. People reaction towards you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Oh, you are not here. You, you, you don't like it now. You want, you want us to talk about African presidents. You are not serious. First John 3 from verse 14. We know we have passed from death to life. Because we love the brethren. You see that? Because we what? You know you are no longer in darkness again when you have love. When love is what is in the refinery. That is, when, that is the proof that you are no more in darkness. If as you are still here, you are a Christian, there is still somebody. Be it an unbeliever that you just hate. You are still in darkness. You are not in the light. You've not come to the light yet. He said the proof that we are passed from darkness to light or from death to life is we love, we love, we love, we love, we love. That's the proof. We love. He 
is there anybody now, if I tell you now that this is your neighbor that is sitting close to you, look at that person eyeball to eyeball and say, everything I am wishing for you, let it come to me in tenfold. Can you? Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> no, you are not hearing me. Can you look at your neighbor now, sitting next to you? Or you are a husband, you are a wife. Look at your husband, eyeball to eyeball and say, everything I'm wishing that, <laughs> for you, for you. Let it, I didn't say you should tell the person no, because you don't, you don't know what is in your heart. Let it return to me in hundredfold. Can you? Can you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that? Husband, wife, can you look at your wife and tell your wife that? That only, look at my eyes. Everything I've been wishing for you, I want it to return back to me in hundredfold. If there's still somebody you are scared to tell that, that means there's still darkness in the heart. You should be able to tell everyone what I just said to you. Ah, you are not hearing me. Do you hear what Jesus said? Love your enemy. Ah! Meaning, you should be able to look at your enemy eyeball to eyeball and say, everything I'll be wishing for you, it should return back to me hundredfold. That's me of love your enemy. I, <laughs> who God help <ever>, us? So <laughs> Some people cannot even tell their wife that talk less of their enemy. You can't tell your husband that. Tell your neighbor, keep your refinery clean. Hmm. You know, recently online you will see people, uh, there's what they call Pamkane Banga in Nigeria. They use it, they produce oil from it. The refinery, people, people saw the refinery that it was some people that have no bats, some dirty people, they were using their leg to mash that, this thing, and the oil was coming out. That's to show you that many things we are eating, the refinery is dirty. Are you hearing me? That machine that gets done, that they are mashing the oil out. Oh, that is the refinery. So when many people eat it, they become sick. Some places, some coke we are drinking are fake coke. If you see where they make them, the refinery is dirty. That's why people are getting sick. Some food you eat in some places where they cook it, the person was dirty, touched the armpit, then he didn't wash the hand, went to the toilet, went to poo poo, come with that dirty hand, what, and be turning the rice. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Some people even have a big sore and they didn't take care of the injury. They are still cooking for you and you are eating. May God save us. Once the refinery is dirty, the byproduct will be worst. Are you hearing me? May you not eat the food of a dirty caterer. Dirty kid, you have a baby that is playing around dead. The baby poo poo, you use the hand to pack the poo poo. Then you now went back to turn the soup again because the, the soup is bad. Some of you have eaten a lot, you don't know. May God. <laughs> Do you ever take care of the refinery? Uh, the, the byproduct will be clean, will be good if the refinery is pure. We know we love the, we, say we know we are passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abide in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. 
Uh, you are not seeing that scripture. Please, all believers, look at that. Look at that. He says he's a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goose and sees his brother in need and shut up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, the refinery, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. Are you seeing love there? See, and whatever we ask, we receive from him when we have confidence, when the refinery is pure. He said, because we keep his commandments and do these things that are pleasing to his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. We should love one another. We should love one another. You don't get what you desire. You get what you think should happen to others. <laughs> you didn't hear what I say. <laughs> You don't get what you desire or what you want. You get what you desire for others. You don't get what you expect. You get what you are expecting for others. You don't get what you wish. You get what you are wishing others. Are you hearing what... Is the truth. The refinery we always produce is byproduct. The product we always produce is byproduct. The product we always produce is byproduct. They say an apple does not fall far from his tree. The condition is not far from the state of the earth. That's what he's saying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God puts digestive system for you, call refinery. Put thinking in your mind. It's a refinery of thought. And puts meditation in your heart. It's a refinery of words. You are, you are, you, you are a big, you, you are the biggest refinery in the whole world. Though. You don't know. Everything, as you are sitting there now, a process is going on. In your system, machines are moving, taking things, blood is going its own way, water, everything. A refinery is going on on you already as you are sitting. So let us keep the refinery clean. Tell anybody, keep the refinery clean. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. You don't get. You see what? Let me, let me show you something again. God said to me, write this down. Good things does not come to people that deserve it. It comes to people that attract it. Hmm. Good things, favor, blessings does not come to people that deserve it. It comes to people that attract it. And how do you attract it? By what is in your heart. Are you hearing me? You attract it by what is in what? Yes. So, write this caption. Do the lovely to attract love. Do lovely things. If you are looking for love, you won't find love.
do lovely things, it attracts, it compares love, it magnetizes love to you. Before you go deep to say, okay, you want to even start searching for relationship, say, I need somebody that will love me, you have to be lovely. If you go searching for love, you will only get your lovelessness. Mm. Yes, I'm, I'm searching for... You will find what is in the refinery. And when two searching people meet each other, because you, you are searching for love, you will meet who is searching like you. And both of you will be expecting from each other and there will be fights. Do you know what brings offense? Expectation. So Peter said, just as I have, I have love. You will definitely attract who have love. Do you hear what I'm saying? Just as I... If you always find yourself attracting people that beat you in relationship, you have hate for somebody. somebody yes, yeah, somebody that treats you bad. That's why you don't just... You are in a relationship. You pull out by force from that relationship and say, I'm going to search for a new pasture. It's a lie. You will find a wounded person like you. Tip Joshua said, listen, blessed memory, the way you leave a relationship will determine how you enter a new one. You can't live a, a relationship in pain and not find another pain. It is what is in the refinery that you attract. So make sure you are intentional about what is in that refinery. That's me of keep your heart with all diligence because that is where the issues of life come from. Proverbs 4. Guide your heart. Make sure there's no body you hate. I'm telling you, make sure. Not even the devil. Oh, you think you should hate the devil? How can the devil meet God and God is talking to him as if they don't have any problem? Think. And you that don't even know anything about the devil, it's you that is fighting. Devil, fire. I hate the devil. I, uh, you, are, you, are, you are saying devil, fire. You are dancing. Fire, devil, fire. You are attracting the devil more. You are attracting more demons. With all the things you have been hearing about brother devil, brother Satan, he appeared before God. God said, where have you been, my, father, my son? <laughs> my son? My son. Ah? Huh? Hmm. I elect like men. What a life. I told God, we say, Michael, cash him, cash him. <laughs> Kill him. No. Where have you been? Have you considered my servant Job? What? It's not you that is having hate. You are drinking Panadol for another man's headache. You are drinking grandpa for somebody said headache. Don't even hate the devil. If you read your Bible, there was no place where the Bible says hate the devil. It said, do not love the world. That's all. Don't love the system. That's yes. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. For whosoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, they are not of the Father. Where is the hate coming from? Even if God did not tell you to hate the devil, yet we are hating our fellow man, thinking evil, bad refinery, bad products. And that is why we keep on asking, why is everything going bad in my life? The product in the refinery has brought back the byproducts. Do the lovely to attract love. Are you hearing me? 
believe me, you can't just wake up one day and just say, okay, I just feel like going to buy bread for the poor and feed street people on your own. No, nobody asks you. And not attract love towards you. You, you. you don't need to tell anybody, I feed the poor. Don't, don't, no. <laughs> just because the refinery is here, the byproduct must come. You don't, need, you don't need to announce it. Do you hear what Jesus said? He said, whatever you do in secret will be announced publicly. Who is announcing it? There are forces that you can't see. If you put orange in a blender, which is the refinery I'm talking about, it will give you orange juice. It will not give you grape juice. It is what is in the refinery that will come. Before Jesus left this world, the last thing he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. He doesn't want to hold anything. He, he, nothing. He doesn't want to hold anything out of anybody, not even the devil. He said they don't know what they are doing. Leave them. I command your heart, which is the refinery, to become pure. Amen. Be healed from hate. Be healed from bitterness. Any evil the devil planted in your heart. Hate, bitterness, anger, grievance. That is attracting the byproducts of everybody hating you. Things turning bad for you. I say let your heart be sanctified. Be sanctified. Be purged. Be cleansed. Be purified. Let your heart be clean. In the name of Jesus, let your heart be free from offense, from bitterness, from hatred. In the name of Jesus. John was saying in, in Third John, one from verse two, brethren, I wish brethren I wish that should be the, 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 the voice of your heart for everyone brethren I wish that you prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers you know you are walking in the same church with somebody you hate the, your fellow washers you hate your fellow workers you hate each other you don't love each other you, you hate in your mind it's just it's just a uh, Nigerians are eight. Hmm. We ate one Nigerian. 30,000 South Africans will hate you that is a South African. You don't know. Hate one South African. 30,000 different nations will just hate you. That's how it is. The byproduct will be many than the product. There have to be a spiritual cultivation of the garden. Don't leave your heart to be the forest and a wilderness where anything. Don't leave the refinery like that. A garden is a well customized, taken care of. You see, that is what a garden is. You, 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 you take care of it, you trim it. That's why it's called the garden of Eden. It's not the forest of Eden or the wilderness of Eden. Somebody cleans, cultivates and decide what should grow in a garden. That's why God says, dress, keep the garden. He's talking about the refinery. And any day Satan entered Eden, Satan cast them out of Eden. Anytime Satan entered your heart, put his product like hate, he become the chief. And all the byproducts the devil had, started coming to Adam and Eve. Death, sickness, vengeance, Cain, kill Abel. Because one, they just allowed one. One product of the devil. And it brought many byproducts. Be intentional with your products. Good is in the land. Love should be in your heart. Are you hearing me? 
Many of us are blessed. Now you will not blame only African president. Right? If, you don't, if, if you don't know this one now, you'll be thinking you will be hungry for African president. It all started by one hit for one brother in their house when they were at home. Say, Mpo say, I don't like Sipu. Give me one name again. Zerifatu. Sibu. Sibu don't like who? Vusi. <laughs> that's, that, that's how it started. It's all, it's all started from hating one person. Now you hate the whole nation. You don't care how people are living. Are you hearing me? You know why God could trust Joseph with the whole nation? Even when his brother that hated him saw him, he forgave them. The refinery has been pure. The refinery has been pure. It's not that, uh, thank God, I've gotten to the position I will deal with you, all of you. No. The refinery was pure, a love. It's only love that was there. There was no hate. He was not wishing them bad. He was never wishing them any evil. Even Nancy Mandela. He came out of prison. I said, what will you do to those that have been brutalizing you and kept you in prison? He said, the greatest prison is the prison of the refinery. That heart. If I still hold them in my heart, I'm still in the prison. So when they are talking about forgiveness, many people don't like it or don't hate anybody. You need, some people like to go to church where they are giving you reason to hate people. Bring your cutlass. We must cut their head today. Today, today's enemy must die, stab and shook deliverance. Stab and shook. <laughs> stab. In fact, next week, everybody come with your cutlass. Let us do operation stab and shook. If you are so enemy conscious of hate and hate, if you are so enemy conscious and hate conscious, one day you will kill your friend. Because when you don't see any enemy again, who will you use? The hate is already there, so it has to be used for somebody. You will kill your friend that day. Judas did not just saw Jesus to kill him. He has been like that. Maybe he hates his wife since. So when he came to church, he didn't even know it has just been there. He's been used to that. that. Many years ago, there was one guy who wanted to run for Olympic. So, he said, I'm going to train. He said, he spiritual power. And he went to a sangoma, to a, to a spiritualist. He said, I want to run a race and I want to win this race. The spiritualist gave him something to drink. And say, whenever you stand to run, look back, you will see a snake chasing you. He said, because of the fear of the snake, you will run more than ever. And it happened. When he got there, on your mark, guess it, he looked back. Go, the snake was chasing him, big snake with big mouth. He was running. And he came out first, 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 first. He was always getting first. Now, when he retired, God's old. He's not running again, so he became fat. One day, snake now came to the earth. Run now. Snake is looking at him. Run now. So when snake saw that he was not running, snake now run, enter him. <laughs> because snake wants to run. He run, enter inside his body. And the man was not doing like this. He was not fine again. They have to take him for deliverance. True life story. Because that's what I'm telling you. If you hate, finish. You hate, enemies, finish. When enemies finish, you must use that hate for friends. After you finish running the Olympic with snake, and you say you want to retire from running, no, well, snake say, well, I need to run. Let's run. <laughs> Whatever made you leave any relationship or any church or any pastor 
Or some people are sitting at home, angry, hating. It's time to squash the offense. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Now you should be able to look at that person you hate and say, what I wish for, my, for you. If you can't say that yet, you are not saved. What I wish for you, let it come back to me in hundred food. You should be able to tell every man that. Hmm? Anybody, any, that's, how, that's, that's the litmus test. Now, this is how you'll be helping yourself not to have bitterness. Once you're angry with somebody or you, you, somebody offended you, so check your thoughts. If your thoughts, if you look at that person and can't say within yourself, that although you offended me, what I wish for you, let it come back to me in hundredfold. If you look at that person and you can't say that, you need to work on your heart. You are not safe. Are you hearing me? As you are angry with African president for the byproduct, be angry with yourself also because you have a product that is bringing these things around your life. Are you hearing me? Amen. You see, I was using the African president to open your eye more. You were angry. Ah. Let them bring one president here for him to blow him here, beat him here. You were here. You are gyrating. Do you know the one you have in your heart? Your, yeah, that refinery. You are the president there. You have finished everybody there. If, if some people see what you have done to them in their hearts, they'll, they'll be shocked. They'll say, blood of Jesus. What, what, like, <laughs> say, what, what did I do to... Why, why are you thinking this thing about me? <laughs> say, if... if they can just bring two knives and stab this guy in his two eyes. Shook the throat. Fire him from his job. Let him become poor and come and beg me. And kneel down and be rolling on the ground for me. If you see some people's hearts, you will shout blood of Jesus. You, if you don't do what I'm saying, you will be seeing wrong byproducts. Like I said, byproducts used to be menu. Just crude oil, you have six thousand byproducts. Imagine you have one crude oil of hate and six thousand people hate you. <laughs> one crude oil of hate for one person. Then it produces six thousand byproducts of people that will hate you back. But with different races, different tongues, different language. Oh, they don't know why. They just they don't like you. Immediately you enter this office with I don't like you. That's, that's what the boss would just tell you. You say, what did I do? Holy Ghost fire to the witches in my You are the witch. If you honor people in your heart and you treat them as king in your heart, anywhere you enter, that's how they will treat you. <laughs> say, I am free, free. from condemnation. Are you free? Are you free? From condemnation? Are you free? From persecution? Are you free? From hate? Listen, before this year ends, I'm expecting many byproducts from you. From what you've learned today alone, it's, what, you, <laughs> what you've learned alone today can change your business, change your life. I'm telling you, it can turn your life. You will just know that I already have the, buy, the product. This I have can produce more. I already have a hand, hand work. I already have a business. This business can multiply and create more byproducts of business. Are you hearing me? 
like Isaac, make sure you always give yourself even if it's 30 minutes or 15 minutes every day for meditation. Don't do anything. Not that I want to go and pray and be shouting, Lord, give me many. <laughs> Some people just enter their room, say they want to pray. They will just be shouting, Me, my okay, me, my okay, re, go, go, ga, ga. <sighs> So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord. Meditation of my heart. You don't meditate. It's not time to go and sit down and be worrying and be writing all your bees. No. It's a time to meditate. What God said should happen to you, the promises, put it in line with your business. See my business. What something can come out of this business. You can't do this thing. Believe me, you can't do this for three months or a month, a full month. And the way out will not come for you. I'm telling you, I bet me, nothing, no, you can't do it for a month. Something, something will show in your life. Something, you won't believe it. So, are, are you hearing me? Something you already have the product, everybody here. You have it. If I cash you from now to the end of this year, I didn't see buy product from you, we'll gather for your sake. We'll gather you beat. If you provoke Nigeria, worry person, we'll gather you beat. We'll gather you beat. Have they gathered you beat before? You had different slap is coming from different side of your ear. If you, you are, you are not hearing me. If from now, the six months, we didn't see byproduct from you, we'll gather you beat. <laughs> are you ready? Hear yeah, the word of the Lord. Wisdom for expansion is coming on you. Yeah. The wisdom for increase is coming on you. Listen, sometimes when you are meditating, you just hear a voice from the Lord. Say, call this person. He has an idea about this. I'm telling you, that's what happens. Somebody will just come to your mind. A location will just come to your mind. Go and take business to this side. Leave this place where you are. Go that side. I'm telling you, that is what happens in meditation. God begins to give you direction. Hear the word of the Lord. Your meditation we begin to bring direction to you. Amen. God, we begin to speak to you. Amen. Reveal to you. Amen. Open your eyes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. A man called Kava. His name is Kava. He was the one that saw peanuts. He put it in his lab and spoke to peanuts. He said, Pino, tell me things that can come out of you. He was meditating the day, he was just there. And that's how he discovered 300, it's him only, he discovered 300 byproducts from Pino, him. I think it's John Carver also. Everything will begin to speak. That's when you will know that everything has voice. It's not, listen, Solomon was speaking, I, I was teaching the partners yesterday. Solomon said in Proverbs 6, from verse 6, he said, go to the ant, you sluggard. You sluggard. He said, consider a way. They don't have ruler, no overseer, but they know when to gather food. Meaning Solomon said, consider, consider, meaning meditate. So he meaning Solomon was sitting and looking at ants, and the ant life was talking to him. That's why he wrote that proverb. He drew inspiration. Ant was talking to him. We don't have leader. We don't have overseer. But we know when to gather our food in summer. And listening to this wisdom I'm going to give to you. Yesterday, I corrected a wrong proverb that many people have been moving around with. We say, eh, man of God, I've been walking like elephants. Eating like ants. Have you seen elephants walking before? 
You should say you, you walk like ants to eat like elephant, not walk like elephant. Elephant is a lazy worker. If you had the opportunity to employ workers and you saw a worker that is working like ants, they are working, and you saw an elephant, somebody that is working like an elephant, who will they employ? The ant. So how will you say I walk like an elephant and eat like ant? That's why you are eating like ant now, because you are walking like an elephant. When you walk like ant, you will eat like elephant. Tell them about think. I, I'm, I'm not here. Yeah, put your hand in your brain. Tell them about think. 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 And grow rich. Again. Think. Put your hand in your neighbor's head like your hand. Yes, yeah, touch your neighbor. Touch, touch, touch. <laughs> touch your head. <laughs> there, your neighbors have said think and grow rich not walk and grow rich think, think, think I see you entering your season of divine exploits I see you enter your season of divine inventions your creativity ability has been unfolded the grace to create invent produce manufacture abundance it has come upon you this talent that you have it will begin to bring many byproducts. This product God has given to you, it will begin to bring many byproducts. In the name of Jesus. I see thousands coming to testify because of this message. Say I've been equipped. Yes. <laughs> you, you'll be shocked with the kind of wisdom that is. You, you say, where did this come from? What kind of invention is this? What kind of wisdom is this? How did I know this? How did I know I should call this person? How did I know I should be here? How do I know I should move to this place? You, I, oh my God. Your case will be different. From now henceforth, in the name of Jesus, you will be the wisest. In the name of Jesus, anywhere you go, your wisdom will be unique. Your own will be unique. Your work will be unique. You will be outstanding. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Finally, just the word the Lord said, I should tell you. Remember, the man at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says, in that pool, many impotent folks. To be impotent means you can't do anything yourself. Somebody needs to help you. Many impotent folks were there. The Bible says, Jesus met one of the impotent folks the man that has been there for 38 years and do you know the question he asked him will thou be made whole do you want to be complete do you want to be perfect the man said i have nobody to push me in jesus was not saying to that man no no it's not about somebody pushing you i am the word of god if a revelation can come from your spirit from god I'm telling you, you don't need any man. If a revelation can come from within you, from God, that is the Jesus that is speaking to that man now. And he spoke to him, he said, carry your bed, rise up. Walk. He did not help the man, he did not do anything, just the word the man had from his spirit. 
made him to stand up. That spirit of impotency disappeared. That is what the word of God does. As you are hearing it now, before you were feeling impotent, but now as you are hearing the word, something is stirring inside of you. Something is rising inside of you. Now you will carry your bed and walk. Without the aid of anyone, without the assistance of anyone, the way out has come. Are you hearing me? Give thanks to God. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for this new season, for this wisdom. He has given you the key. Give him thanks. Lift up your voice. Begin to give him thanks.